Hi, my name is Armando Lobo. I'm a Brazilian composer and multi-artist. Firstly, I would like to thank the organizers of this wonderful event for the invitation. I would also like to greet all participants in this conference. I will now start answering the questions sent to me by email. A true artist cannot stop working regardless of the context. Art is a way of raising and dealing with questions and an artist should have issues to discuss, if possible, questions that will never be resolved. A sincere artist deals with ambiguities. He, she is not an ideologue or an industry official. He, she is a friend of the astonishment. Producing during the pandemic was more of a production organization challenge than another type of difficulty. During this period, I created and produced an audiovisual music album with 11 compositions and two operatic short films, Penelope 19 and The Last Day. I took into account the restrictions of the quarantine from the very initial creative phase, which made the process of material production of the works easier. I have read and still read a lot of classical literature. The classics for me are not a fixed root radical in a distant time and space. They are a rhizome, a possibility of multifaceted development, an opening to the becoming. A certain agonistic and transcendent tension interests me enormously in the classics. The same tension that we find in traditional popular cultures all over the world. A Hindu or Yoruba tradition is also classic in symbolic and spiritual content. My region in Brazil is very rich in cultural manifestations in which agonistic and transcendent tension is a central factor in symbolic expression. I see classical vigor in works from all historical periods and cultures. For me, The classic does not represent formal order or balance, but rather a spirit of archetypal universality that lends itself to the most disparate formal and aesthetic developments. To create Penelope 19, however, I was inspired more by Albert Camus, Xavier de Mestre and the great Swedish filmmaker Ingmar Bergman than by Homer. I was also driven by the almost epic adventure of producing impromptu, with virtually no budget and no rehearsal due to pandemic restrictions. The context in which I work always interferes with my creative process, so that I know that I will be able to execute the work that is being conceived, knowing that it will not remain a drawer as an unrealizable project. Unlike Penelope, I can't wait. The traditional cultural manifestations of the Brazilian Northeast bear a lot of resemblance to the classical spirit. The more you travel to the countryside and the hinterlands, the more you will be able to perceive the language of transcendent Agon, especially in cultures where orality is a central factor. In more urban centers, however, the dissipation of banality and consumerist immediacy puts culture at a distance from the spirit. I would strongly like to emphasize, however, that I am not an author who is characterized by exploring themes from classical antiquity. I am a contemporary author who has the classic ingrained in his spiritual constitution. I have no intention of systematically preserving or even researching classical works or themes. My interests are many, although one of the most important threads of my activity is tragic tension.
I have enormous artistic confidence in Brazilian soprano Gabriela Geluda. We couldn't rehearse due to the pandemic, so we solved the whole skeleton of the scenic actions by phone conversations and WhatsApp. I knew that she would prepare a stimulating performance and the challenge would be just to capture this with a simple smartphone in a way that this lack of adequate technical means did not appear in the foreground, disturbing the space of expressive presence. Penelope 19 had a very low budget of just $400. Therefore, I accumulated several functions such as composition, recording, mixing, and editing. Penelope 19 was filmed in Gabriela's own apartment. The core of the work is the central scene in the apartment's hallway. I asked Gabriela to feel like a tragic bird in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, a forest in her prosaic apartment hallway. And she surprised me. Because of the pandemic restrictions, we filmed everything in just one day. Editing was quick, as the takes uh, worked very well. José de Oliveira is a great historic name of opera in Brazil, with very relevant production and contemporary aesthetics. Opera in the present day should avoid being opera in the traditional sense. I believe that sound theater would be a more suitable name for contemporary operatic production, affirming the open character of combined arts. My contribution is to spark Brazilianness in the context of contemporary Brazilian music. I'm a little uncomfortable with the lack of interest that most Brazilian composers of concert music have in relation to other musical languages such as African, Oriental, and even Brazilian music itself. It's not a matter of denying European influence, nor of being nationalist, reductionist. It's just the opposite. Today's art must inhabit a time of adding experiences and not stay inside a stylistic drawer, with artists competing to show who is more technical or intellectual, giving concerts aimed at academic peers and ignoring the multiple symbolic and expressive possibilities of the world in its dramatic diversity. In this sense, the understanding of the classic as a spirit rather than a form or already fully accomplished works means that the classic itself has nothing to fear in relation to any contemporary diversionist pluralism. On the contrary, this is a great test to prove if this spirit really has relevance or if it's coming to an end. Paradoxically, nothing would be more classical than the end of the classic, by means of the tragedy of a contemporary culture in which an illusion of plurality is regulated by computational algorithms.